Nicola, I, I was trying to call you last night. I have nothing further to say to you or any member of your family. Not too late to hand in stuff for the jumble sale, am I? I've got some of the kids' superheroes' costumes here. Hold it right there. Cross this line and you're dead to me. We are asking you to join us in solidarity and not support this travesty of an event. What is going on? Spend as much as a penny in that jumble sale and I won't serve you in the cafe or speak to you on the street. And unless Marlon evicts Naomi, we're over too. Seriously? OK, you're going to have to explain. His daughter was one of the feral girls who attacked me and left me for dead. She was? It's complicated. Look, Naomi was just at the scene at the time. And did nothing at all to stop it. Her father knows the truth. But he refuses to do the Christian thing and help a parishioner in need. He'd rather cross to the other side of the road on his donkey and look the other way. Actually, isn't that the Good Samaritan? So until someone's prepared to tell the police what she told the vicar yesterday, this jumble sale is sanctioned. Please don't blame him. Everything's my fault. I'm sorry. Sorry your BFF almost killed me? Or sorry you got caught? You're scum, just like the rest of your skanky mates. OK, Nicola, this needs to stop. What you're doing, you are bullying a young woman, publicly shaming her. You should be ashamed of yourself, actually. What did you just say? Come on, we've all been there. Done something in our past that we bitterly regret and we can't change. But she can change it. In a heartbeat if she wants. I'll even give her a lift to the police station. Well, just stay out of it. Leave us alone. I came to talk to my dad, not you. So that's a no then. You can't say I didn't give you the chance to put things right before I deployed the big guns. I've called the bishop. I've got an appointment to see her and I'll be telling her everything. You're trying to get me the sack? And you? You're my GP. You know what that attack did to my mental health, but you're siding with my attacker. How can I trust you now? You know it's not as simple as that. It is to me. When I get home, I'll be putting a call into the GMC so I can give them my full and frank opinion on why you're not fit to practice. Just so we're clear, if she doesn't do the right thing and confess to what she did, your careers are over. All you have to do is tell the truth. If you're confused about what that means, ask your dad, he's the expert. Not now. Look, I'll come with you to the police station. I'll support you. We'll do this together. Can you just leave it? Since your mates attacked my sister, she's been a shadow of her former self. She's lost her self-confidence. She has nightmares, flashbacks. Why, well, you think I don't? Oh, for heaven's sake, Naomi. Why are you on her side? She's lying through her teeth again. She's about as much intention of making amends as your psycho sister. That is inappropriate and unfair. I tell you what, uh, I'm just gonna come back in an hour or two. OK, so feelings are obviously running high. And whose fault is that? I hear you, Nicola. We can all hear you. But if you just back off for a minute, maybe we could stand a chance of sorting this out. There's no harm in giving them some space. We've made our point. And I've got our make. This isn't going to go away. And neither are we. I think she's actually going to talk to the bishop. And the GMC. Of course she will. Have you any idea of the damage you've done? I never meant for any of this to happen. I didn't mean to lie to you. Yeah, well, talk is cheap. I've been struggling too. And I tried to tell you how I felt yesterday. And how I can't tell the truth because if I grasp on these girls, I'm dead. And you didn't want to hear it. <laughs> You're blaming me. You said unless I do what you want me to do, I can't be in your life. I thought your God is about forgiveness. You've not even tried to forgive me. 